Part 1 You hear two travellers, Lilith and Alex, having a discussion in a cafe. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Hey, Alex, are you okay? I was worried something happened. Oh, sorry for being late. I drove down the wrong highway and got lost. Don't worry. It's only been 20 minutes. Actually, I just looked at some Austin tourist websites. I got some tea. You want anything? Yeah, I think I'll have some tomato juice. It's just what I need right now. Yes, it's really hot and humid out right now. I think I'll get iced tea this time around. So you went on the wrong highway, huh? Yeah, for sure. I've never driven in this area before, right? So, after I pick up the rental car from the airport, I try to follow the map to the downtown area here. Unfortunately, there was a lot of road construction going on, and I went south on the highway instead of going north. After a few minutes, I realized I was going the wrong way, so I exited the highway and came back up here. Well, I'm glad you're here, okay? Did everything go well at the car rental place? Oh, yeah, it went very well. The business owner was kind of a strange person, really tall and thin. He had a bushy beard and moustache. He was also wearing a cowboy hat. I'd never quite seen anyone quite like that before. I guess every place in the world has eccentric people. Yeah, definitely. But he told me about all these great places to eat around here. He said they have some really great Mexican food in the area. That's great. I haven't had that in such a long time. We definitely have to go to a place for dinner. Well, I want some more iced tea. How about you? Yeah, I need to order still. You know what? I think I'll get one of their sandwiches too. They look really good. Okay, let's order then. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Now then, what are we going to do today? I was thinking it would be nice to see the state capital and then maybe the university. Well, according to the website, let me see. The state capital has tours only on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Yeah, if we went there, it would be much better to go on a guided tour. Oh, wait. Yes, there are tours on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but also on Saturdays. The university site lists a lot of places that are interesting, so maybe we can spend most of the day at both the capital and there. We should definitely go to the lake after that as well and even spend the night camping there. Great plan. Is there anything else you found online? Yeah, I know you studied biology, so I was thinking that the park would be good. They have a pretty unique collection of trees and plants. They are open Monday through Saturday, so we can go there any time. There's also the mountain. There are some photos on the website. It looks like they have some great views of the city, and I definitely want to do some hiking. Yes, we would have to take another day for the park and the mountain. But you know, the guy at the rental place was talking about the weather. It seems that there will be a pretty bad storm coming tomorrow. We need to plan around that since it won't be good to be outside when it comes. Certainly not. It's not worth hiking somewhere if the weather is terrible. You know, we can go to the park and the mountain today and then go to the indoor places, the capital and the university tomorrow. It'll be hard to get around in the rain, but at least we'll be inside. I agree. By the way, how much are these places? All of them are free except for the park. Wait. I'm not sure about the capital tour. Yeah, they don't charge anything for the guided tours. All right, then. We'll go hiking first and then relax at the park. Then we can camp at the lake. We'll go to the capital and the university tomorrow. Yeah, this is one of the best universities in the country, especially known for their art programs. Really? Yeah, I heard about that. 
They have some art galleries there too, ones with some good modern art. Wow, it seems like that's a lot for us. Yeah, I'm really excited about camping at the lake. The sunsets are supposed to be beautiful there. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You're going to hear a presentation about the student union given during university orientation week. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 11 to 15. So, the student union here is really the heart of campus life. There are many different services and most of the student groups and organizations meet at this facility. As a student at the university, you have full access to all that we offer. I guess I will talk about the dining facilities first. We have eight venues from which students can choose to have their meals. Two of these are franchise outlets that offer normal fast food fare, such as fish and chips, hamburgers, and soda. One dining area has a do-it-yourself system. Specializing in food for the vegetarian and vegan members of the campus community, there is a wide selection of vegetables, fruits, and grains. At the end of the buffet are several cooking stations available for students to create their own meals. The Student Union has a wide variety of entertainment options as well. Those over the minimum age can drink at one of the three bars. During the school year, they regularly offer live music, musical groups from both the local scene and occasionally even very famous people have performed there. All the bars serve domestic and imported beers, wine and hard liquor. A cinema theater with 750 seats is available for screening films. The Movie Appreciation Group also screens many types of films, even foreign and classic movies. Also, the theater is where guest speakers hold lectures. These speakers are sometimes professors from other universities or other notable people. Before you hear the rest of the presentation, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Now I want to explain how to go about reserving a space in the student union for your event. We have several different types of rooms, ranging from small gathering areas to large lecture halls. Students can also show a movie or documentary at the cinema theater. Any student organization that wants to hold an event or meeting must submit a form available at the information desk in the main hall. On this form, you must provide a name, their contact information, a short description of the event, the type of room required, and the time and date you need it. Any organization sponsoring the event or meeting must also be listed, along with the budget. This budget has to include items bought for the event and any people who are hired. There is also a section for any sort of multimedia resources you need. Write down anything you might need, such as speakers, projectors, screens, microphones, podiums, or even computers. 
we will contact the Media Resources Center to make sure all the necessary equipment is there at the right time. We are always looking for ways to improve the student union. If there is any part of the building that needs service, please inform the person at the information desk. There is also a suggestion box at the desk where you can fill out a card and give us more ideas for improvements. We have about 1,500 people working here for the community and we're open to anything that can make your university life more enjoyable and productive. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You'll hear three students discussing an assignment they are doing together. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi Alice, wow, I'm about 15 minutes late. Sorry about that, the bus got stuck in a lot of traffic. You want to go over the presentation we have to do now, or get something to eat? No problem, there's always traffic at this time. Juan and I were thinking we could eat afterwards, you know, so we could relax and enjoy our meal. Sounds good, so let's go over what we have to do again. OK. Well, since it's a long presentation, we'll work together on the different parts of it. What did we decide to call it again? I think it was Eastern European economies move towards democracy and capitalism. The professor said the presentation had to be how long? Hmm. He said about 35 minutes. That is how long the three of us are supposed to present. Then there will be a 10-minute question and answer session. Any student or the professor may ask us a question regarding the topic. Our grade also depends on how well we do in that part. We also have to write a summary of our presentation, right? Yes, the summary of our presentation has to be submitted one week before our presentation date. It must be 500 words. How are we going to do the presentation? I thought we could give the class a basic handout, like an outline of our presentation. We could even create a poster with a map of the area we were talking about. Well, I was thinking we could make a slideshow using computer software and then using a projector during our presentation. People pay more attention to images on a screen. Hmm. Well, actually, I've never really used that kind of software. I always thought a basic handout or poster was sufficient. I think giving the information we have with visuals like that will really make our presentation stand out. Well, it would have to be done really well to make any sort of impact, and I'm not sure if that would be a good use of time. Maybe it would be better to spend that time on research and writing. I don't think it would take away that much time. Well, all of us have to research the assignment well and write a really good presentation. I think making a fancy visual presentation wouldn't help. Actually, I think such slideshows are distracting. People focus more on the images on the screen than what the presenters are saying. I'm still not sure I agree with you. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. All right then, let's go through some of the reading material. 
What was the main text we had? It's called The Political Economy of the Former Soviet Bloc by Fovac. That's spelled F-O-V-A-C? Yes, that deals with the specific area of Europe we are researching. There is also An Economy in Transition by Smith. That one is published by the University Press. Well, the professor suggested another useful book, one that focuses on the leadership of those countries. Sometimes the personalities of those in power affected historical events. It's called Foisted into Power by Brown, published by the Academic Press in 2005. Well, we still have to plan out a few more things, but I am quite hungry now. Shall we get a snack before we proceed? Definitely. I'm getting a sandwich. I need some rice with lentil curry, that's for sure. Let's go to the all-campus dining center then. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear the first part of one lecture in a series of lectures about environmental issues. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. In this lecture series, we have been looking at the most pressing environmental issues that the world faces. One of those issues, global warming, has become very fashionable to talk about in the past decade. Though I'm not trying to diminish its importance as a problem, it must be understood that the effects of an increasingly warm planet will not be seen for many more decades. One problem affecting the lives of people right now is the scarcity of water. The need for fresh water will only increase as the world's population grows, especially in developing countries. In the future, changing weather patterns that come with global warming will only make the problem worse. People need water to drink, cook food, shower and wash clothes. Most of the planet is covered with water, but unfortunately only a tiny percentage of it is fit for human use. Of all the water in the world, less than 3% is fresh water. More than two-thirds of that remaining percentage is locked up in glaciers in Greenland, Antarctica and elsewhere, also unavailable for human use. The water vital for life comes from lakes, rivers, underground aquifers, rain and snow. This surface water, groundwater and precipitation, is not disturbed equally across the Earth's surface. For example, Canada, which has about one-half of one percent of the world's people, contains about 10% of the world's readily available fresh water. Brazil makes up about 3% of the world's population, but within its borders contain nearly 12% of the world's fresh water resources. As the economies of developing countries grow, the need for fresh water also grows. One example of this has to do with the production of meat. In some countries, the demand for beef increases when people earn more money. However, raising cattle is incredibly water-intensive requiring about 15 tons of water for one kilogram of grain-fed beef. The scarcity of water has a direct impact on human life. When people are forced to walk many kilometers to the nearest source of fresh water, it may take hours away from their day. This, in turn, takes time away from school or from other productive work that helps the general economy. A number of solutions have been proposed to deal with the scarcity of water. Some of them are technological, like the construction of desalination plants. These plants convert brackish salty seawater into water fit for human use. They are very expensive to operate and maintain, though, and cannot meet the world's growing demand for water. Other kinds of solutions involve only a little technology or involve modifying individual people's habits. In a rural part of India, 
a village facing water shortage started collecting rainwater. A simple system allowed them to save water that fell over a large area and use it during dry periods. In the suburbs that surround the cities of developed countries, house owners are using xeriscaping techniques. The main purpose of xeriscaping, unlike traditional landscaping, is not to use supplemental irrigation. This requires the use of plants, shrubs, and trees that are appropriate for the climate. In dry areas, this means planting ones that use less water. In the future, many countries will need to use a variety of these techniques in order to provide enough water for their citizens. Water security will be of utmost importance to those governments, especially in areas that are politically unstable. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Thank you.